So let's have a lesson on this piece. Um, you might have this in another book, but um, watch the lesson for free. We're going to talk a little bit about right hand fingering, about identifying the melody in this piece, and just approaching learning new pieces such as this one. But if you need the music, um, it is part of my Volume 2 classical, Easy Classical Guitar Collection, so there's a link for that underneath the video. So let's start off with a discussion about the melody in this piece. Um, there's a lot of arpeggios and a lot of activity in this piece, so it sounds um, more advanced than it, than it is. It's really not a hard piece in terms of its shapes, but um, it is very active, so it does it sounds intense. Um, the melody is, usually I say like, oh, all the notes with stems facing up are the melody, but that's not true in this piece. Sometimes the notation of of classical guitar pieces are simplified slightly because if you have three voices and you're trying to cram it onto one stave, it gets pretty crowded. So in this particular case, you just have to listen for what note you think is the melody. So I think it's this. If I'm counting, one, two, three. One, two, three. Kind of goes there's a little bit of a bass activity and then back to the upper voice bass voice upper voice second half um so in this case um sometimes it'll be helpful if i'm counting because um identifying which notes are which. So bar 17, that's halfway through. This is the new section in G major. Opens in E minor, and this is the G major section. So one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Bar 25. One, two, three, 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 one. So a very simple melody hidden inside all of this activity. So let's take the first four bars now, and or first eight bars, and let's play the melody on its own, and then I'll add all the notes in so you can hear it back to back. So it's, it's kind of hidden within that overall texture. So you want to make sure to bring it out. And um, often in this piece, like in the first eight bars, the melody is almost primarily in the middle finger, in the M finger. So uh, making sure you have a deeper follow through in that finger uh, will be very important. In this particular piece, we're not going to use A, um, even though it, you could play it like this, but because the bass voice is um, playable with the thumb the whole time, that's what we're going to use. So all those down stems there, you can play it with your thumb. That kind of helps to separate the, the melody in terms of your technique. So it's like the melody is in your M finger and the bass is in your thumb, and then I finger is really taking care of that accompaniment figure, which you can just bury in the texture. It can be quite soft compared to the rest. Um, besides that, um, let's just do a walkthrough of the piece and I'll mention a couple of other right hand fingerings as we go. So just make sure to bring that melody out. phrase you just want to taper off a little bit to relax that phrase bar nine so I'm just doing thumb and I there and then you're back to the normal pattern bar 17 we're into G major um, I'm just repeating I am for the chords 
Then make sure that make sure your hand is aligned. It's not like this, so you have to reach out, but swung around so you can grab that chord. You could you could do this. Some books do this. You know, they just slide one and two back and forth. That's totally acceptable. Um, to some extent, I like using like three four though because like the legato connection to the next bar is really nice. Um, but that said, you have to get the third finger from the bass note. Which is a little bit awkward. So both solutions are have their disadvantages, but they're, they both work just fine. Um, just follow my fingering if, if you're questioning uh, which one to do, just follow the one I've listed on the page. Because there's going to be so much I am repeated stuff, um, I just keep the I finger going. I, P, I, P, I, P, I, am. So as soon as the chords start happening, you're already kind of on those two strings there. Here, because I just played I, I start with M, then go back to the I. phrase and then you go back and you repeat the beginning. Um, I left out the repeats in the performance but feel free to add all the repeats so you can just repeat each section once but then on the DC of finne you go back to the beginning of the piece and play without repeats up to the finne. Um, that's the kind of roadmap of the piece. That's it! Um, just make sure you bring out the melody and that you have some resonant arpeggios and it's a very um, full sounding piece. This is like what Kuruli does so well. It's like all the elements of a great piece are here and they work very well on the instrument so you just have to make sure you bring it all out.